Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. Uh, today we are doing a review of Kang the Conqueror number one. Um, uh, I'm guessing Marvel put out this book because of some events that may have happened in one of the TV shows, so they want to get people involved. Uh, so with that in mind, at the end of the at the end of the towards the end of the discussion, I will have some um, minor spoilers for for the Loki TV show. Uh, but that won't come into play till after I discuss the comic. I just kind of want to tie it all in. Um, uh, so feel free to watch this, and then I'll I'll do a spoiler alert to make sure that you are able to uh, go away if you don't want to get kind of some some of the spoilers. Um, so uh, yeah, let's get into the comic book now to to go ahead and, and review it. Uh, so Kang the Conqueror, uh, number one, is written by Jackson Lansing and Colin Kelly. Illustrated by Carlos Magno and colors by Espen Gooden John, uh, with letters by Joe Carmagna. It is published by DC Comics. Um, so this book focuses about uh, in, the, in the 31st century, a young Nathaniel Richards encounters his future self, better known as the time traveling tyrant Kang the Conqueror. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with Kang the Conqueror, he has a long winstanding. Uh, um, a story with the Avengers. Uh, one of my favorite stories actually is not from the comics, it's from Earth's Mightiest Heroes. So you should go check that out. It should be available on the Disney Plus app. Uh, so in this issue though, Kang takes Nathaniel back 65 million years in the day when the, wa- the dinosaurs were wiped out uh, because he wants to kind of make sure that he grows up to be Kang. So he's trying to teach the young version of himself um, who it is. Now, Kang is a bit of a complicated character, and maybe we'll do a whole episode on who Kang is closer to you know, probably the Ant-Man movie. Um, but yeah, in this one, like, it's really just about self-conflict be- between these two beings from... Uh, they're from, they're the same being, but they're from different ages. Uh, so I find that very interesting. And I think that the art team does a very good job here. Let me show you guys this stuff. Um, so this is these are the introductory pages we have, and the mirroring of these characters. We have Kang the Conqueror on one side, and Nathaniel Richardson, thirty first century, on the other. And just kind of look at, uh, I don't know. I really love this composition. Uh, you can see the things that that Kang focuses on: the war, the conquering, while the young Nathaniel counterpart. Uh, still feels a little bit more uh, hopeful and like he wants to explore. Like he's just fascinated. He is a little bit mm, kind of bored with the 31st century, so he wants to explore. But it's not like Kang as an adult who wants to like you know kind of just conquer the world. Uh, so that that really puts these two at odds. And and let me put pull this up. Uh, so. As you, as you guys can see, there will be conflict. Uh, we have a pretty cool little Dr. Doom Easter egg uh, as the characters meet. So it's it's just really interesting. Um, like I mentioned in the story, the older Kang wants Nathaniel to be ready to become who he's supposed to be, to become that conqueror. But as a, as a, younger, as a, as a young person, Nathaniel does not want to be that. So that's kind of what sets them up at odds. Uh, let me pull up a panel that I really love here. I think the art team really upset themselves. I love this uh, this angle of like Kang looking and and kind of this feels like the theme of the of the book, right? Like the or like the premise of the book explained in one panel. In the end, I am Kang, and at the beginning, I was you. So like it feels like in this book in this series, we're gonna maybe learn how one became the other. Um, So yeah, it's really, really interesting. Um, I really enjoyed this book. The book is going to be a mini series, so there's not a lot of commitment there. Uh, So yeah, if you want, if you want to learn more about this character, which I will not go into those spoilers I mentioned earlier for the Loki TV show, uh, and maybe the future of the MCU. So as you guys know, I think the reason Marvel is putting this show is because we were just introduced to a version of Kang the Conqueror in Immortus, that character at the end of Loki. Um, 
So Marvel wants to make sure that all those things are kind of connected. And and so if you ever if you ever want to know what characters may be introduced in the TV shows in the future, just follow along with the previews. And if you see it, uh, if you see a mini series that looks like it's out of nowhere, like something like Kang the Conqueror, then you can kind of have an idea. Uh, so I think it's very interesting that that they are exploring this character more. I Kang is someone I need to explore more myself. I'm not very familiar with, other than the big uh, cosmic thread. Like I don't know, I don't know all the versions of Kang and when he's appeared. Like I said, my my favorite story is really that from Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and even that one is not such a big time traveling shenanigans like um, normal. So this looks very interesting. I'm super on board with this, and I can't wait to keep reading. So, anyways, uh, spoiler over. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know what you thought of this issue if you read it. Uh, let me know if you're going to read it or if you picked up anything else that you want us to check out, uh, whether it be Marvel, DC, or independent. Uh, so, thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, leave us a comment. Um, the channel, you know, we want to keep growing the channel. So, uh, we appreciate you guys checking out all our videos. Uh, if you like our reviews, let us know. If you want us to review anything else, let us know as well. Uh, and remember to hit the bell so you know when we go live on the weekends uh, to talk all about uh, all this kind of stuff and everything we've been reading. So, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.